Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room resolutions. We always try to match the resolution of the room to two things. If it's a pro situation and there's income involved, then that usage is generating revenue. Um, if it's a consumer and it's a two channel, multiple channel listing experience, then it's that listing experience, the time involved, that determines the resolution goal that we sh should try to achieve. We have talked to thousands of people over 17 years, and I keep track of, I have two sheets, yellow pads on my desk when people call, and there are six or eight categories that we always uh, look at in, in terms of trying to take these subjective things like, People go, well, I don't know what kind of resolution I want in my room. Okay, so you don't know, but we've got to know. So we're going to back up a little bit and look at your experience. You know, look at the, the gear you've had over the years, and we can get pretty close. So what is resolution? Well, it's a systematic plan to reduce pressure and reflection distortions. That's what it is, because that's the two problems we have in the room. Pressure low frequency pressure, and middle and high frequency reflections. And both of those interfere. Pressure exaggerates, attenuates. You can hear too much, you won't hear anything at all. Reflections produce reverb, which interfere with direct energies from our sources, our speakers, instruments, if you will, whatever. So it's this constant juxtapositioning of pressure and reflections in the room. So that's what we're up to. So we have to kind of quantify that. You know, it's a quality that we want. Now, how do we put numbers to that? Well, over the years, you know, we, we look at a lot of things. You can look at size, volume, usage, space, budget. There's all kinds of variables to consider. And we took all of those variables that we've had data on and kind of put them together. What is your budget versus your expectations? We saw this to be a big issue. People have really high expectations for reasons. Their experience as a professional engineer, mixing, generating revenue, or just listening experience. 15, 20, 25, 40, 50 years of listening. So you can take that and, and apply it to uh, this budget expectation. So most of the time you got to lower expectations because the budget isn't there to satisfy the goal, or at least their goal. So there's the, the dynamic that comes into play. Bring these two issues into more of an alignment. Expectations always exceed budget and always exceed the space that they have to work with. The expectations that they have and the performance that they want can't be done because of the space that they have. They don't know that. We do, because we see it every day. So the usage really defines the resolution goals. What are you going to do in there? Usage and experience. What are you going to do in the room? How long you've been doing it? So over that time frame, you have certain expectations. And you create those. Those expectations really come about because of things that you don't want, that you've heard that you don't want in your room. It's like a contract. All the items in a contract that you sign, a legal contract, that's all the things that have happened in the past that the person who's presenting you the contract doesn't want to have happen again. So it's making a list of those. Don't do these things because we've had them done to us in the past and we don't want them. They're not good. So that's the contract. You get people to agree ahead of time not to do those things that have been done to them before. That's how that all works. So... We have three resolutions. What do we got here? Oh, Pro Mix is about 80%. That's what a mix engineer wants. He wants about 80%. Consumer, two channel, years listening experience plus 10 years. If you've been listening 10 years or longer, 80% is a good, good mark to shoot for. There's less, we can do less. Mastering will give you an idea. They want 90% resolution. They only want to work around 10% of the issues. I get it. That's the final process in the musical chain. 
You don't want to fight the room all the time, especially at the end. Fight it in the beginning, in the mix, and in the recording. But don't fight it when you're mastering. You want to get as much of it out of the way as you can. So, balance from resolution with budget, usage, and listening experience. Remember, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan, my grandma's old saying. And you really got to plan this. Because every resolution has a cost. 70, 80, 90 has a cost. You got to do it. Because... You want to make sure when it's all said and done and the money's all gone that you achieve your goal. And we, we know how to uh, do that. So start the process. Go to the webpage, acousticfields.com. Upper left-hand corner, there's a tab that says room analysis. Fill out all the information in that. Send it in. Schedule a time slot to speak. And when I have the data in front of me, we can set some goals and work towards them. Room resolutions. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.